Hi, and welcome to What's Planned for BC version 18. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, Microsoft just came out with the list of stuff they're going to implement in BC version 18, aka Business Central 2021 Wave 1. Um, and I thought it would be nice to go through the list with you guys and, and give you my opinion and uh, impressions of what's on the list. This is actually the same time I record this video because the first one had some weird audio issues. So uh, if you've seen that, thanks. Uh, hopefully this one is way better. Anyway, here is the list. And um, I think the first thing to actually specify is that even though we in April will get version 18, new version, new major version, uh, these things are not necessary going to be delivered to us on in 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 april uh, the the concept of a wave meaning that these things will come from april to um to september um and we saw the same thing with version 17 where yeah there were new stuff in version 17.0 but there were lots of new stuff in 17.1 also um so be prepared that that it's really Microsoft is rolling these things out when, when they're ready, uh, more than just on a on a specific date. Um, and there's a link to this page below, right next to the subscribe button. Hit subscribe, and uh, you won't miss all the other videos that are coming. Um, let's go to a list. So so Microsoft will actually check mark. Uh, this list when something has been delivered, so uh, so we can actually go and go and see it. Anyway, it's it's kind of group in in uh, in logical groups, and the first one is called administration. Um, and the big one here is is well, they call it improvement for for delegate admins, but what it actually means is that now you as a partner user, a delegate admin. Uh, can do job queues for customers. Uh, until now, you, you have not been able to actually create a job queue for a customer because you were not a user in the customer on the customer tenant. You can do that now. Um, the two other things here, one, I think there's just a bug fix. Improve the reliability of the database export operation for larger databases. Yeah. Uh, that should just work, so hopefully it works now. Um, the last one, reassign an environment from one Azure Active Directory organization to another through support, meaning that now you can actually move an environment from one tenant to another, or you can ask support to do that for you, which that's pretty nice. Next uh, next section is the application, and this is, actually, this is actually a good list. So I have been critical of Microsoft for not really pushing uh, hard enough on the uh, on the application side and and spending all their effort on on the the technical side, uh, and and I love the tech, but but at the end of the day, this is still an application that we need some users to use. So so application improvements are very important, um, and there's some big big and small. The first one is interesting. Uh, goes back to uh, to. To, to the delegate admin thing here. Assistive setup help move the task of adjusting item cost to the background. What does that mean? Well, that means that already today you can create a job queue, a job for, for handling a item cost adjustment, but it's not that straightforward to set up. And, and uh, this is basically just a, a wizard experience. So you set, set it up to the wizard and then it will set up the job queue for you. So nice improvement. Uh, I like that. Um, creation of lot, no, automatic creation of lot and serial numbers, information cards, that's nice. Bank rec uh, improvements and payment rec improvements, uh, that's very nice. Um, here's an interesting one. Changes in synchronization between contact and customers. So we have in, in BC the, the relationship management module as it was labeled uh, back in version five, I think. Um, so, you know, 
contacts and campaigns and, 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 and that, that stuff. The little CRM system uh, that Microsoft forgot about. Um, and today there is some, well, there's a relationship. So you can create a contact from the customer card by, if there are no contact and you type something, then it will create a contact from what you type in the contact field. There's some, some funky integration and the change in synchronization between contact and customer here, as far as I read this, is basically, you know, less. Uh, the customer card will no longer be used for sync. Um, I, to be honest, this the relationship management module is kind of the the ugly stepchild that Microsoft don't really want to recognize, uh, but it's still there, and it's not. I. I Maybe, maybe it shouldn't be in the application anymore. Maybe it should be detached. Maybe it should be be a proper uh, CRM integration instead. Uh, it it's clearly sits in a weird spot. And, and I think that there's certainly room for improvement here. Um, so this is perhaps an indication of the path that Microsoft is taking since they're removing dependency on it. Um, but the biggest one in this uh, in this release, the, the the one thing that users will remember version 18.4 is dimension corrections. This is big. Uh, every anybody who has ever worked with dimensions know that it's a pain in the to correct if you did something wrong or you missed a, tr a dimension on the transaction or stuff like that and you have to credit a whole lot of stuff and go back and forth uh, just to change the di a dimension value now and, and there are even there's multiple apps out there uh, and some of them in 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 uh, app source that can help you with this because it's just a big issue so so this from a user perspective is the killer function of version 18. Being able to fix your dimension postings without going through all the hoops. Uh, big, huge. Um, then the next section is is kind of funny labeled. Uh, the whole thing about these groupings are, are, are kind of strange, but better with Microsoft 365. Um, the first one is look up Business Central contacts from within Teams. I've read this several times, and as far as I can understand, again, this is that you can actually get to the contacts from Teams and look one of those up. Not look up a vendor or a customer uh, or look up an item or stuff like that, but you can look up a contact. Um, again, this. Again, this weird module that's in there that is, yeah, I, I think it's great that we get better Teams integration. So what we got in version 17 was a good start. Uh, I did a couple of videos on it. You can go check them out. Um, there's only room for improvement. And and this is, this is interesting. Uh, if it's only contacts, then they're not very useful. Uh, but uh, let, let's see where where it takes us. Um, enabling of word merge is actually, again, the uh, relationship management modules, uh, mail merge function that had lost. So the, in the role tailor, there were ability to do mail merge uh, that was lost with the web client, so reintroduced. Uh, so it's not real, really enablement of word merge. It's fixing something that was broken when they switched from one client to the other. Uh, the last one is a natural giving. Now that we have cloud support, uh, cloud printing support uh, in Business Central, support Microsoft Universal Print uh, is, is, is a given, so good. Next section, country and regional. Uh, so in, with version 18, we officially welcome India, Greece, Romania, and Turkey into the Business Central family. Uh, Lots of excitement has happened around, especially the Indian version. Um, and I've seen a lot of 
talking boss on 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 Twitter about this one. Um, India has its own very special sales tax thingy, and 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 that should be supported. And and I think what's interesting about these countries in particular is that in 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 opposite the old countries that are supported these these are app based so, uh, countries as far as i understand uh, somebody correct me in the comments if if i'm mistaken but i believe that these four countries are not modified base objects but they are actually supported by an app on top of w w1 um uh, which is where we need to end because some of the current uh, countries that are supported are you know, that's really really terrible base cost based uh, objects customizations uh, go go take a look at the new zealand one and and tell me if that's something you would like to see continue in that way um so great welcome these four new countries so the next one is the microsoft power platform not to confuse with the better with Microsoft 365. Uh, um, and, and going, taking the last one first, enable Power BI connectors to work with APIs instead of web services only. Of course, um, that, that's a given. Um, synchronize item availability from BC to uh, D365 CE or for sales. Awesome. I think a lot of customers will be very happy with that. The last one, virtual tables from Microsoft Dataverse. I have read these six lines of text multiple times and I'm not sure I understand them yet. So if this is that you from Dataverse can see BC as virtual tables or if is because Dataverse is just another name for CDS, but it's kind of the non-CRM CDS. So maybe it's just that we can actually access those tables. Um, I'm not sure. Or if this is just the fact that you can have relationship between them. So you can have uh, set up a table relation from a native table to a CDS table. That might also just be what it says. Not sure. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm not too proud to get comments from Microsoft also if you're watching this. Anyway, um, moving on. The next section is the modern clients because that's the only clients we have. So I guess, Microsoft, you can drop the modern moniker because there is no non-modern clients anymore unless what we have now is, is getting too old and they're not modern anymore. Uh, that's just a silly uh, title. Anyway, this covers the clients. And uh, there's the usual performance improvement and usability improvement, and that's all good. Um, other than that, it's mainly focused around printing, which is super nice. Uh, the first one is uh, Report API allows passing the layout needed for report execution. You can do that today. In a, in, a, in a weird way by setting, calling a, 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 a specific function in, 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 a, in a single instant code unit and that sets some stuff and then that is the layout that is used. So if we can pass that as a parameter to a report.run instead or report.save as, that would be wonderful. Running report in the reports in the background, huge. That is, people gonna love that. Uh, certainly. And the last one is apart from printing from the mobile app, which I didn't really even realize you couldn't. Um, user can change the assigned printer before printing a repo. This is like this is something we had in, in way back 30 years ago. Uh, and something that we lost when the when the transition to the to the web client. So nice to have that back, especially now that we have a cloud printer. So so you can default to a cloud printer, but sometimes you might just want to, you know, not cloud print uh, and get the PDF instead. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. Again, the next one, modern development tools, because 
it's the only one we have. Uh, so there is no classic development tools anymore. So you can, you can drop the headline. Um, the big, two big ones here, um, and the only thing I think I'm gonna mention here is you can now add keys to base tables. Uh, an example is that I was just working on something where I, I needed to do something on posted sales invoices and posted sales query memos. And uh, I needed to set a filter on, I think it was the external document number, which there were a key on, on the posted sales invoices, but there were no key on the posted credit memos. So, so for that customer performance will be good on invoices and be, will be not as good on, on credit memos. Uh, so it'll be good to be able to set a, a, a key on a, on a base table. This one implies that you can also set it on other extensions tables. Uh, but then I saw something on Twitter where Microsoft were talking about that might not be the case. So let's see about that one. The other big one, is that you can now extend and report. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you can extend the data set and you can extend the request page. Uh, so request page, that's kind of, you know, just like do a a, a page extension um, for the request page. The data set is huge because what we do right now, if we need to add just a single field to a new repo, we need to make a copy of it and have that as as a copy uh, object and then subscribe to the report substitution event and, and substitute the base report with our report. And then whenever Microsoft comes out with a new CU, we have to make sure that the updates in the base object is reflected in our copy and that's just a mess. So this is, this is a big one uh, and it will make a lot of people's life easier and a lot of developers very happy and uh, just overall uh, making the system more reliable. So one important thing about this is that there is no extension of the layout, but we can switch the layout. So it's not really a big deal. So we can make a copy of the layout and, and put that in as a custom repo layout. But the you can extend the data set, you can ex extend the um, the request page. So the last one on our list here is onboarding. Um, and onboarding is always a big deal, how to get users onto the system and using it and and figuring out how to set it up and, and figuring out what to do and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is a big deal. Uh, BC is not as easy to onboard for new users as it should be. Uh, you know, some people have even written books about it to help users get along. Uh, but I welcome any effort to make uh, make onboarding uh, easier. So this is this is good that it actually has this much focus. Uh, there's lots of lots of room for improvement still, but uh, I do feel that. Um, that this is one uh, one of the most important part. Actually, I missed one. I want to tell you about up on the uh, on the application. Uh, the last one here, the simplified bank statement file import, because it kind of relates to onboarding also. So right now we have the uh, dynamic data exchange definition thingy uh, where we can set up how bank files are formatted, what fields and all that stuff. But it's, it's difficult, even for, for, you know, for people in the business. Uh, uh, it, it's tedious. And um, this one, as far as I understood from, from Microsoft on Twitter, will be a, let's see if it doesn't really say anything. Um, but, but the idea is, I think this will be more of a wizard approach than you say, okay, comma separated these files and then it will create the uh, the data exchange definition uh, for us. So it, it, that's still the the technical bit, but I think it's a, it's a front to make it, uh, make it easier. Anyway, that's the list as I see it. I think there will be more things coming up. That's usually the way it works. As soon as the development bits are 
public. I will do a video uh, where I, like the last time, I look behind the scenes to see what has actually been added to AL. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And uh, until next time, have a wonderful day.